All right, thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It is International Youth Day, and the theme, well, we're talking about the digital pathway for sustainable development. Now, young people are at the heart of deploying digital technologies in all countries. The theme for this year provides us the opportunity to discuss what we need to do to ensure that as many young people as possible are actively participating in the digital economy. ICTs provide the means to deliver high-quality goods and services in healthcare, education, finance, commerce, governance, agriculture, and other vital areas. They can also help reduce poverty and hunger, boost health, create jobs, help mitigate climate change, improve energy efficiency, make cities and communities more sustainable. Now joining us is Christian Munduate. She's from the UNICEF Nigeria. She's the country representative of UNICEF Nigeria. Good morning, Matt. Thank you for joining me. Yes, good morning and thank you for inviting us to, to speak precisely today that uh, we are celebrating the International Youth Day. Yes, um, International Youth Day, especially for all youths as myself too, it is important for us to, you know, just celebrate this day. But I want to ask, what is the significance of this year's theme? I, I presume that it is from clicks to progress. So a lot of people are clicking, a lot of people are, you know, on their devices right now. Youths are known for, you know, using technology um, to better their lives. But what is the significance of this year's theme? Well, um, we cannot really deny that uh, uh, globally, and in particular in Nigeria, we have a population dividend. And this means it's uh, one of, uh, you know, um, a, a couple of years where you have the highest percentage of population uh, that are young. Mm. Um, technology is is one of the tools that can help uh, many of the gaps around the world, but in Nigeria as well, on how to prepare uh, young people for the correct skills, the correct opportunities for job, the correct uh, access to education and learning so that uh, they're very well prepared to a changing context. Uh, the world is changing, Nigeria is changing. There is a huge need for development in Nigeria, economic and social development, but this will only be achieved if the young people are very well prepared to assume with all their creativity, their energy, their resilience, resilience that they can be empowered and well-tuned and prepared to um, address these mm. gaps, but also the opportunities that are there. Mm. I know that young people are capable of everything and anything because they have a long, um, fulfilling life ahead of them. And so once they put their mind to something, they can just achieve it. And so now that we're talking about, you know, the digital pathway for sustainable development, not just for themselves, but for wherever they find themselves, how can young people start to leverage this technology for sustainable development? So um, young people definitely are the torch bearers of sustainable development. They yeah. are the architects of our shared future. Yeah. We have to be clear, and this is uh, a message to all partners, stakeholders, decision makers. And the message is, it is the time to support young people, young Niger Nigerians. It has to be today, it cannot wait in two years time, three years time. Yeah. As I mentioned, the population of young people in the country is huge. Yeah. So there are too many needs that the young people have that are not being addressed and that are not being met. Beginning with a gigantic gap in terms of education. So uh, accelerating progress using technology can be a means to bring this distance lower. Mm. 
So I, I agree with you when you say the time is now. We, we cannot wait for two, three years. Um, we have to start now. And it's just, it's just harnessing all of the gifts that we have. But I'd like to ask, can you share some success stories where you've seen young people you know, have, this, um, have this burst of amazing things that they are doing when it comes to sustainable development? Definitely. First, I would like just to make a, a small sort of introduction. Mm. Um, and in there is an initiative in UNICEF that is called GenU, and this is a public-private sector partnership. It came as an idea uh, while uh, we had the UN Youth Policy 2030, and this began in 2018. Um, we launched the Jane initiative in Nigeria, and uh, it is mainly to support young people between 10 years and 24 years mm. in terms of strengthening uh, their skills, expand their learning, um preparing them to to um apply for employments or engaging with opportunities with the private sector partners to have an opportunity for a job mm. so genju basically is looking to engage 20 million young people by 2030 That's amazing. Uh, up to today as i speak we have managed to engage 6 to 6.2 million mm. young people, <laughs> young Nigerians in the platform. The platform provides a, a range of opportunities uh, um, that you can use online platforms. For example, we have a program that it's called uh, online that it's called Yoma. Yoma gives, um, it's a sort of courses that you can access online and that you are provided with points and tokens so that you can progress and at the end you get a certificate. Um, these are for young um, and adolescents and young people that um, are already at certain level of education, let's say high school, mid-high school, but also we have the Nigerian Learning Passport. This is to accelerate learning at distance with those young people who weren't able to go to school and those are adolescents who are out of school. So this gives the opportunity to learn at distance. We also have another platform that is called U Reporting. The U Report is a way where is a is a tool where young people can express themselves. They can participate. They create forums. They are also requested, uh, you know, to provide their opinions in certain um, areas of their development. So they can express and participate in decisions that are um, that concern their own development. Um, so I mentioned these platforms because I want to share with you three experiences of young people who have participated in these programs. Yeah. So, for example, Saru Ishak Ibrahim. He was part of the Gen Juice People Action Team and uh, is from Sokoto. She was a very strong and she is a very strong leader so she has been leading the campaigning for girl child education and for public health. Mm. Uh, she has contributed with efforts at local level to empower girls to raise their voice on critical issues. But she has also been uh, volunteering in mobilizing um, communities to access public health um, to to go to the health campaigns, mainly, you know, vaccine is a huge problem. We still have two million children around the country who have never received one vaccine, and this is why they get sick. Unfortunately, in many cases, they they die. 
So she has really been a champion in raising awareness and is very active in uh, health issues. She will no doubt uh, is becoming a leader in her community, hopefully in her LG and then at state level and she can then um, have an opportunity to lead um, to lead groups or to lead to have a leadership position in at state level. Uh, we also have Mohammed Abdullahi. Um, he is a co-founder of an entrepreneurship that it's called Thrive for Health Initiatives. And he, the, what he does is he trades plastic waste for healthcare services and then breaking the barriers to uh, for poor people to have access to healthcare by promoting environment sustainability. So they collect the plastic, uh, they're crushed, it is sold, they make funds, and that's uh, like a fund for people who cannot um, buy who cannot pay the National Health Insurance Scheme premium so they can have access for this. As you see, he is in an economic activity. He is uh, sensitive to climate change, but he most of all is showing all the adult uh, people, the leaders, the decision makers, the different stakeholders, mm. what solidarity means. That's Besides fantastic. he's making a living, he's sharing mm. with other people that are in major need. So this is a great example. And finally, I would speak about Khadija. She, um, she's from the Girls Education and Skills Partnership Group. Initially, she was really behind her education and she um, enlisted for the Nigerian Learning Passport. Um, she gained uh, essential skills, and she rapidly um, transitioned um, to accelerate education. Mm -hmm. And also, um, she began an, another entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So she has a, a tamarind juice business. Oh. And this has been profitable enough mm -hmm. so that from her gains, she has been able to um, to be in school. So Aww. she is paying her own education. Her business is named Daracola. Mm. The three of them, and I can mention many more cases, uh, have been part of our Genju edu and education programs with whom we uh, implement with, of course, partners in some states with the government, with the state government, with the local governments, mm. and we provide these different platforms for children. That is amazing. I mean, listening to all of these um, stories for Khadija, you know, all of them, they're doing something great with their lives, obviously getting this skill set. And I think you've just touched on how you can use this skill set to, um, you know, create a job for yourself, which Khadija has done with her tamarind business. And then you have better opportunities in life. But I want to ask, how do you think the government and our educational um, institutions can help support the youth? youth today. Now, if you look at some schools, well, for some secondary schools, some of them do not even have computers. So if we're talking about um, technology, digital pathways, they really do not have that. And you might be hoping on the government to do that, to, you know, provide all of these um, resources for them. So how can the government and our educational institution um, better support the youth today? Okay, so access access to technologies, of course, require uh, funds, right? It right. requires uh, available budgets to invest in this. I think that um, you know, understanding the limitations of of the funds in Nigeria, mainly in the public uh, budgets, mm. uh, we cannot deny that maybe some priorities can be also consider, you know, um, if you make an analysis in the sectors where um, we are investing, um, try to see if, if uh, 
you, young people tech and access to education and technology uh, can be one of the strongest priorities. We've, there is a massive um, voice and call from young adults that they want jobs, they want uh, to develop, they want to learn, they want to have education. So I think we cannot just, uh, you know, stop listening to them. We have to listen to them and the priorities on them have to be set. Of course, uh, you need a huge initial investment. But on the other side, using technology, using platforms, making internet uh, accessible, uh, providing more permanent energy, electricity, so that, uh, you know, in, in the rural communities, young people can have access to this platform. It requires um, a high initial investment, but then it is massive. The yeah. gains are massive, yeah. um, so it, at the end it come it becomes lower. It becomes value for money. Once you set up a learning platform, and this learning platform is being used and it's being well managed, basically you don't need uh, too many public servants or public uh, staff to run this. You just need to give uh, the opportunity. And this is where um, we should start on a innovation and the better use of creativity. Mm. Hello? All right, so let's talk about the role of social media because a lot of young people are on social media. That's where most times we spend our days right now. So how can we ensure digital activism and also um, shape our future? If we're talking about a sustainable future, it needs to be shaped. So how can we ensure that the youths are engaging responsibly? Um, and you know, what role do you see social media playing when it comes to the youth um, developments, especially on this day where we're celebrating International Youth Day? Well, so definitely social media plays a central role in uh, digital transformation and uh, digital learning and opportunities for young people. I would say it is the best means to spread mm. around the opportunities that are available everywhere. It can also accelerate, it can, it, it can uh, increase the coverage and the impact. Um, I think also that social media in overall, the different, uh, uh, you know, um, people that manage, but the ones that use and access social media also have to be aware of an ethics code. As you know, social media can just help in sustainable development, but on other on the other side, and and uh, well, that's not the majority. But there are some um, people that use social media for purposes that not necessarily contribute to peace, to democracy, to sustainable development. But social media, by excellence, is one of the means that can be used to transform and to provide youth with a new uh, future. Mm. Well, we hope that um, you know the youths are using it for their future. They're using it for sustainable development because we can tilt over to the negative side of social media when, you com when it comes to bullying, um, when it comes to pilfering, um, when it comes to scam as well. But if we're talking about International Youth Day, if we're talking about sustainable development, it should be the positive things that we're doing with the technology that we're being given. We have all of these resources, and it's important that we we tend to utilize them. We want to say thank you so much, Ma, for coming. Thank you um, for just coming and celebrating International Youth Day with us and sharing all of these valuable insights. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you are young, so happy Youth Day. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. We'll be speaking with Christian Munduate. She's the country representative of Youth
UNICEF Nigeria, the country representative of UNICEF Nigeria. And we've just been celebrating the International Youth Day, the digital pathway for sustainable development. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having breakfast with me. As always, my name is Rume Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.